Good morning, church. Welcome. Are you glad to be here? All right, good answer. Stand up with me. We're going to start praising the Lord. One. Bless the Lord. 
seated for just a moment. It's just an awesome morning. We get to experience baptism. So let me direct your attention over here. Think of anything more joyful that we get to rejoice in uh, to celebrate Jacob's baptism this morning. So that's kind of the perfect song to lead into this. The, uh, I was reading your testimony again this morning, and I was thinking about you know, something that you said in there. And you talked about feeling like your life is out of control and uh, just reaching that moment of saying, God, I'm going to give it all over to you. And uh, I'm going to quit trying to run it by myself and, uh, and let you be in charge. One of the things that we believe as a church is that when we are baptized, that this isn't the end of a journey for you. This is just the beginning. Uh, this is the first step toward a life that is lived with Jesus Christ. And Jacob, what you're declaring today is exactly what you wrote in that testimony, is that you don't want to try to do it on your own, that you don't want to try to just do it by your own strength, by your own power, but you're going to give control over to Jesus Christ. And here's what he promises to do for you, that he is going to lead you and he's going to guide you by his spirit. And if you'll stay in step with him and step with that spirit, you are going to discover more joy and more adventure and more opportunities to be used for his glory than you could ever imagine. And so it is a real celebration of the beginning of a journey uh, that we get to have this morning. So let me ask you a couple questions uh, just to reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ. Jacob, is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Absolutely. Do you trust him? 100%. Do you want to? Yeah, amen. Do you commit to live your life empowered by his spirit, uh, following him every day? Yes, sir. And do you desire to be baptized? Well, then, Jacob, my brother, it is my joy to baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are buried with Christ in baptism, and you are now risen to new life in Him. Amen. Let's celebrate. Let's stand and celebrate.
Lord, what an amazing promise that the sin, the brokenness in our lives, that we bring it to you and you wash us clean and you put us back together again. Lord, that's where some of us are as we, we come in here this morning. We've got places in our lives where we have failed, where we have fallen, places where we are broken. And Lord, our prayer is that in this hour, in this time in your presence, that you will wash us clean, that that we would leave here knowing that we are loved, that we're forgiven. Lord, that you'd put us back together again, that your, your touch would, would be upon us. Help us to set aside all the things that distract us so that we could be focused just solely on you and, and what you have for us this morning. For we pray all of that and we do it in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we are so glad that you are here this morning. Why don't you find someone seated around you and let them know that you're glad they're here and just welcome each other uh, to worship today. If you're watching online, we are so glad that you are here this morning. And uh, maybe you're at a game this weekend and you're just still plugging in as you're on your way back into town. Uh, why don't you check in, let each other, uh, let us know where you're watching the service from and how many people are watching the service with you. I love that song we just sang. I love it when Charissa sings it too. That's just cool. That's just, uh, uh, the, uh, it's been a good morning already. Uh, baptisms, that song. Let's go home. Um, it, it, uh, why'd you clap for that? <laughs> no, no, you're going to have to hear me. You should come to both services now, Jack. I see you. Don't think I can't. Um, Hey, if you are new here, we want to just extend a, a special welcome to you. We're glad that you, uh, that you found us on the mountaintop, and it may be that a friend invited you. That's the way most people end up here. So friend, thank you for making the invitation, and thank you for responding. We would love to tell you a little bit more about who we are as a church, and you can help us to do that. Hopefully you got a card like this when you came in this morning. All you need to do, if you fill out the back side of it, and uh, you can do one of two things. Uh, t put it in an offering bucket, and we're going to take up an offering in just a few minutes. Uh, or take it out to the atrium to a place called Starting Point, and people there actually have a gift that they'd love to give you, and uh, lots of information about our church. And, uh, and we promise we won't solicit you or do anything like that. It's just simply a way to let us uh, welcome you and, uh, and share a little bit more about who we are. So we are, we're just glad you're here, and we hope that you feel comfortable during this hour, and if we can help you do anything, uh, just let us know, because that's why we're here. A um, couple just quick announcements uh, before we, we continue. Uh, we've got a golf outing coming up next month, October 10th, at Timberline Golf Club, and it's gonna be a fantastic day. The weather is gonna be absolutely perfect, temperature in the mid-70s, and just clear blue skies, I mean, I, I promise you. And uh, it's probably going to be raining and hail or something. But, uh, but it's going to be a fun, fun day, and registration is still going on. You can do that online, or you can do it out in the atrium. And for those of you who are golfers, I'd really kind of challenge you. Put a foursome together and, uh, and come down and, and play golf and have a fun day. Men, women, it's uh, open for everybody, and it's just going to be a ton of fun. Uh, second thing, uh, just to remind you about, today following the second service, uh, kind of in keeping with this Faith in the Modern Family series, we've got a workshop that's going to take place down in the Student Center about understanding te technology. And, um, hey, 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 Doug. Hey, hey, Doug. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Whoa, hey, Ben. Hey, Doug. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Ben's our creative arts pastor. And you're on the big screen. Well, yeah. I, I, you, I mean, you planned the services, Ben. This, yeah. This yeah. is not what we planned. No? No, no. no. I, I promise this is not going to take very long. It's a really important announcement. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. It's, well, it's well, really what is, okay, go, well, then go ahead. All you right, interrupted so, me, so what is it? All right. So you see the lights, and you see the, the, the sound. You know, you hear the sound going on. You see right. the cameras in the back there. I think Cam. Yeah. I think uh, Craig's back there on camera, right? Right there. Craig okay. is Craig Can is on camera. camera. Hey, Craig. hey Craig. Everybody wave at Craig. Well, yeah. You know, there's a Craig's lot. Craig's from Leeds. <laughs> Did you know that? There's a lot of He's stuff that goes really on. He's got a really funny accent. He's from Leeds. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that goes on every. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come back. Okay. Here we go. There's a lot of stuff that goes on every single week, and and I just wanted to kind of point out that we have this amazing team of, of volunteers in our media team. And every week they give, they give a huge amount of time. And, and what they do is, I've told them this, I'm so proud of them because 
every time they come here to serve, they're one of the only teams that when they serve, they serve both on the, on the mountain and off the mountain. And, and on the mountain, they get yeah. to serve here to make sure the worship stuff is working all right. And then they also get to serve off the mountain with our online uh, streaming and all that thing. And let me tell you, Doug, our online services, there are so many amazing stories that are coming out of our online services. Yeah, uh, for those of you online, yeah. we're hearing stories every week about the ways that you're yeah. getting to be blessed. So you're right, that's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's very, what, that's what very, very good okay. thing. Okay, so well, what so, does, yeah, so, what, what, why are you interrupting here we me? Here we go, here we go. Are you ready, ready for it? I'm ready, right. no, I'm ready. We really, really, really need some volunteers. I'm telling you, we, we could Whoa, use okay. some extra help. Okay, stop, two things. One. Yeah, yeah. Never ever get that close to a camera again. No, that's definitely maybe, maybe three things. Two, I'd yeah, moist, moisturize. No, I'd oh, moisturize. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, you get older. Right there. Right skin there. gets dry. You might want to moisturize. Oh, right. And most important, I know y'all need volunteers, but mm -hmm. don't you need like technical skills and you know working knowledge not, of Battlestar Galactica? Not at all. Let me let me and, tell you. Let me tell an you. An iconic T-shirt from Star Wars or yeah, something. Yeah, well, some some nerd stuff would team. help, but I'm telling you, most volunteers they don't need to ex have any experience or training. A lot of ours come in with no experience or training. We will train you. All we need is a willingness to learn a new skill, and we would love to have you. In fact, what, who, who's that over there? Is he? Did I see a hand? No, no, no. That's that's Bob and. Uh, Bob's already served. Bob, you are actually serving in the nursery right oh, now. Man. I mean, you are scheduled to be changing a diaper as we speak. And thank you, he's gone. Well, yeah, I mean, but you can't have Bob. Well, you know, has everybody in the room maybe, have they, has everybody chosen a serve team already? Yeah, you know, this is kind of cool about Mountaintop. A lot of you have. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we are so blessed by that, that so many of you, you know, serve on and, and off the mountain in different ways. But, but I'm kind of looking around. There are people out here who have yet to find a place to get plugged in. So. Oh, well, now that you say that, <laughs> the media team, you can't get more plugged in than the media team. <laughs> thank you. I'll be here all week. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, honestly, we have a bunch of flashing That's lights. We got horrible. some. We got some great knobs to you know press, and, and we got a cheesy we got a we got a camp with cheesy jokes, absolutely. And we've got a camera that's on a on a crane. Did I mean, I, I ran camera in college. Remember? Yeah, Doug, that's about that. Good. Um, I was good at it. Betamax. I, I know. Big I know. Betamax. I know. You know. I know you know, I know, you know how to run home. camera. I'm I'm just saying. Um, I know we said we could train anybody, but I'm not so sure. Let's just say you, you're doing the right thing. You I are serving you. in the right capacity. Right, you I'll, speak well. You're so a I great do my pastor. deal. You do your deal. Yeah, just keep your day job. All right? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, but some of them are capable of doing this. Yes, absolutely. So how, we'll do, they, how do they get plugged in? Well, just... Thanks, right, Stop that. Thank you. Thank just you. stop That's, that. Thank you. Stop it. And uh, basically, if you want to come back, I'll be back in the booth. Uh, You're gonna not service. be on the screen anymore. No, I'm getting right. out of the screen. It's you know. getting creepy. Yeah, absolutely. No, so, stop that. Come back to the booth. I promise not to creep you out. But if you have uh, any questions, come talk to me about that. And and also, you can go back to the iServe booth right outside the sanctuary to sign up for the media team, but also for any other serving opportunity here at Mountaintop. We'd love to see you there. Awesome, awesome. Hey, we, that's great. We are we are talking about technology today, and uh, we could use some help on the media team. Absolutely. And it really is. It's a group that makes a difference on and off the mountain every single Sunday. So go by and find Ben and the control booth. I see that hand, I see doing? that hand. Yeah, I see that hand. Doing? That's great, hey, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. and turn him doing? off, Debbie. Hey, how Turn you him doing? off hey. now. No, I like being no, up like, there. Hey, no, wait, wait, no, no. Off, no. Off. the off switch, hey. turn it off. Is it off? Good. That's... The, uh, we, we really do. Uh, we, we think you've uh, experienced life better when you get to use the gifts that God's entrusted to you. And that's why we make such a big deal about serving. And, uh, and so I challenge you to, to kind of do what Ben invited. And maybe it's media, maybe it's children, maybe it's working with students, uh, maybe it's serving coffee or driving carts, whatever it might be. Find a place to use the gifts that God has entrusted to you uh, to, help, uh, to help grow his church. And if you go by the iServe booth or go talk to Ben in the control booth after the service, uh, we'll help you find that place you can get plugged in. Don't do it, Tommy. And uh, that you can get plugged in. It's just a great way to use our gifts. Uh, we're going to give gifts back to God now. Uh, some of the gifts that God entrusts to us are financial. 
And each week uh, we have an opportunity to give some of those back to him. And it is a way of investing in God's kingdom work. Uh, we always tell people if you're new here, absolutely okay to let the bucket pass by. We never want anyone to feel any pressure. But for those of you who give, know that these gifts, they are, they're making a difference. They're helping us to share the, the love and the knowledge of Jesus Christ with people here on the mountain and people all around the world. And so let's continue to give this morning as we worship God. should be small. Who can tell what magic spells will be doing for us? And I'm giving all my love to this world, only to be told that I can't see, that I can't breathe. No more will we be here. Nothing's gonna change the way we live, cause we can always think but never give. And I can take the change and for the worse out. You know, it's, it's fascinating. That song was written in 1996. That's almost 18 years old. And uh, 
we are living in a world that sometimes seems technically insane. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. So would you pray with me? Lord, uh, first of all, these gifts that we return to you, uh, we'd ask you to take them, uh, bless them, multiply them, use them for your glory, use them to help make your name and your love known uh, here at Mountaintop and, and truly in places all around the world. And as we consider the impact of technology upon our lives this morning, Lord, I, I pray that you would have our hearts open to truths that you might teach us. And we ask that uh, for in your name, and we ask it for your glory alone. Amen. Amen. Well, we are in the third week of a, a four-week series we called Faith in the Modern Family. Really good and this morning, we are dealing with the question, what, what to do when virtual goes. becomes ah, reality. <laughs> and, uh, and we're going to be talking about technology and about the impact of technology on our lives and upon the lives of our families. And I want to begin just by kind of naming the obvious. Um, I, both for me and myself personally, and for us as a church, we are great, we are big users of technology. I mean, you've already seen that in the service. I mean, it is not lost on me that I am holding an iPad in my hands as I am giving this message, and that there is a 40-foot wide LED screen, you know, sitting behind me, and two screens on either side, and anyone who's watching the service online right now, uh, that's because we've got four cameras that are filming it and streaming it over the internet, and they literally do stream it all around the world. Uh, on a, a Sunday morning and, and people are, are plugging in. And so we are big users of technology. And, uh, and if you were kind of expecting to come in and sort of get this sort of neo ludism you know, bashing of technology, I mean, one, that would be highly hypocritical uh, for us to do that. And two, it would not be theologically accurate. Because what, what I hope we'll discover this morning is that technology is actually a really good thing. So here's what I, I want to do instead. Um, first, we do want to make sure that we are providing you with some practical tools for how to manage technology and its impact upon your life and upon the life of your family. And, uh, and we're going to do that uh, primarily through two ways. Uh, the first one, each week in this series, uh, we have created homework for you. And, uh, and this is the homework for week three, and you can pick it up when you leave this morning. And, uh, and what you'll see is we actually had to double the size of the homework card this week because there is so much stuff that we felt like practical things that we wanted to give you on the topic of technology. And on the homework, you will find some helpful hints and some tips for just managing technology in your life. But more importantly, on the inside of it, there are three covenants. And, and they are written to be covenants between parents and children about how to use the internet and cell phone use and, and things like that. But as I was reading through them uh, this week, and, and uh, Chris Connor, our student's pastor, and Melissa Sanderson, our children's pastor, put this together. Uh, reading through them this week, these are really covenants that every one of us should consider making between ourselves and God. And, uh, and so wherever you might be, I'd, I'd just encourage, encourage you to pick up one of these, do the homework, read through these covenants. And uh, maybe it's a promise that you, you, know, you, you make with your kids or maybe with your spouse. But more importantly, this is between you and God and, uh, and how you get this use of technology right. Secondly, I, I'm starting to say it before Ben interrupted me. Uh, we do have a workshop this afternoon that's happening. Uh, it's going to start about 1230 down in the Student Center on understanding technology and, uh, and how to use it responsibly. And uh, it's a great, great workshop for parents. A lot of you have registered for it. If you haven't registered for it and you would still like to go, that is great. We would love to have you attend, um, but we need you to figure out something to do with your kids. Uh, we, we've got child care uh, covered for everyone who, who registered, but we don't have enough child care if you didn't register. So sorry, you know, uh, lock them in the car. Don't do that. That's horrible. Um, just leave them running around in the field. Uh, you know, get one parent to keep them, and, and then you come, come to the workshop because we'd really have you to be able uh, to do that. Because um, we really want to give you some practical tools for, for how to manage technology. Uh, but here's what I, I want to do in the message. Um, I want to spend the message considering some answers to the questions behind why 
we need to get such a handle on technology and, and why th this is so important. And, and to think for a little bit about what are the theological implications on our increased use and dependency on technology. Uh, what's the impact of technology on our hearts, on, on our souls? And how does technology impact our relationship with God? And to answer those questions, uh, we're going to turn to the Bible. And in fact, we're going to just begin by doing that right now. And we're going to start at the very beginning, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, and the very first chapter in that book, Genesis chapter 1. And, uh, and so if you want to follow along and you have a Bible, just open it up to Genesis 1. If you don't have a Bible, remember, you can always pick one up uh, when, when you come in the doors. Uh, Genesis 1, some of you know this, uh, Genesis 1 is the story of creation. And in part, uh, one of the truths that's revealed in the creation story is that you and I have been created in the image of God. So this is from Genesis 1, verses, uh, starting in verse 26. And, and I'm going to read from the voice translation because it's a pretty familiar passage. And I want you to hear it with new ears. Uh, so this is what it says. God says, Now let us conceive a new creation, humanity, made in our image, fashioned according to our likeness. So God did just that. He created humanity in his image, created them male and female. When theologians talk about this, they will use the term imago Dei, to be created in the image of God, imago Dei. And to be created in God's image means a whole lot of things. One of the things it means, and, and this is important for our message this morning, uh, one of the things it means is that we also have the ability to create. That God has created humans in such a way that we have the ability to think and to come up with new ideas, sometimes just absolutely remarkable ideas. We have the ability to innovate. We can dream. We can imagine new possibilities. Uh, we can come up with creative solutions. Uh, evidently, we can't come up with a play to get fourth, first down on a fourth and inches, but um, that's just my own pain that I had to get out this morning. Uh, but we have all these creative abilities. And, and with these creative abilities, we come up with different technologies. And some of them are very, very simple, and some of them are just extraordinarily complex. But every time we create something, we are reflecting the image of our Creator. Now, when God created us, God did that with a purpose in mind. And theologians will, will sometimes refer to this as the creation mandate. And so this is the mandate, this is the purpose that God gave us from the very beginning. And it's also in chapter 1, down in verse 28. It says, then God blessed them, the humans he created, and he gave them this directive, this mandate. Be fruitful and multiply, populate the earth. I make you trustees of my estate, so care for my creation and rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that roams across the earth. And to fulfill that creation mandate, people got creative. They, they used this gift of, of creativity that God had given to us. And so someone figured out how to design a plow so that you could plant better and, and, and have better harvest. And someone figured out that if you combine certain materials, like uh, certain minerals like copper and zinc, that you would create bronze and that, that it was stronger. And then later someone did that with iron, and much, much later someone did that with steel. And, and somebody figured out that uh, if you put straw and mud together in a certain way and, and you baked it, that you could make bricks, and, and that was better to build from. And, and someone else came up with some other building technologies. And, and someone else figured out how to create musical instruments so that Jamie could sing virtual insanity for us you know, on a Sunday morning. And uh, in order to fulfill God's creation mandate, people got creative. Now, here's the definition of technology that we're, we're going to use this morning. Technology is the creative activity of using tools to shape God's creation for practical purposes. Technology is the creative activity 
of using tools to shape creation, God's creation, for practical purposes. And it doesn't matter whether you're creating a plow or a printing press or an operating system for a smartphone. It's all creative activity and it's all technology. And, and we have this tendency, but because of the world that we live in, to imagine that you know, only high-tech items are technology. And there, anything, that, any creative activity results in technology. Does that make sense? It, it, it's all technology, whether it's a plow, a printing press, or an iPhone. It, it's all technology. Now, here's the problem, and it, here's, here's what went wrong. And, and this story is again in the Bible. It's in Genesis. It's a couple pages over if you want to follow it. Uh, the, the humans that God created, Adam and Eve, they weren't content to merely be created in the image of God. They fall to this temptation to want to be like God in every way. And, and the result of their fall is that the world that they lived in and the world that we still live in becomes cursed by sin. And in a fallen, sin-filled world, technology becomes even more important because now we have to create things that we didn't have to create to live in a sinless world. For instance, now we need medical technology in, in order to, uh, to fight disease. And we need technology to keep us warm or, or to keep us cold in uh, and hostile environments. Or we need weapon technology to protect us from animals and, and sadly to protect us from one another. Be because we live in this fallen world, we, we need technology even more than ever. And, uh, and technology is just like everything else in a fallen world. It is subject to this curse of sin. Uh, this God-given gift can be used as, as he intended to further his purpose, that creation mandate, and to bring him glory. Or it can be used in ways that just kind of further our rebellion against God and draw us further and further away from the Creator. And so to get a handle on technology, what we need is kind of a distinctly Christian way of, of thinking about it. So three, three things that we were foundational to this, three, three assertions. Uh, first one, just kind of review. Technology is a good God-giving gift. And, and sometimes people say it's neutral. It's not neutral. It's good. Technology is a God-given gift uh, because created in God's image, we're created to create. And, and that brings God pleasure. Technology is a good God-given gift. Secondly, though, technology is subject to the curse, just like everything else in creation. And, and uh, while it can be used to God's glory, it can also be used uh, to our demise. And then finally, and this, this is the important one, it is the human application of technology that determines whether it's being used to honor God or to further human sin. The human application of technology that determines, if, is it, does it honor God or does it further human sin? And so that means we need to think and, and we need to be careful about how we use. We need discernment about how we use technology. Because here's the unique spiritual challenge that technology presents for us. Because technology is so essential for fulfilling our purpose, the, this creation mandate that God gave us. And because technology makes our lives easier and, and more comfortable and, and more efficient, there's this temptation to make technology an idol, to, to, to move it into the realm of idolatry. Uh, it happens every time we allow technology to give our lives meaning or purpose. It happens every time we begin to imagine that technology will provide the answers for the brokenness of the world and, and the brokenness of our lives. Because when that happens, uh, theologically speaking, what we are doing is we are taking technology and we are replacing God, using, uh, we're replacing God with it in our lives, and that's idolatry. A simple definition, an idol is anything 
that replaces the one true God in your life. You think about it this way. An idol is anything that becomes more important to you than God. Anything that absorbs your time, your energy, your attention, that, that kind of takes hold of your heart. An idol is anything that you expect to give you that uh, only God is able to really be able to give you. Uh, an idol is anything that becomes so central and so essential to your life that should you lose it, uh, it'd feel like your life is just hardly worth living. And sometimes we let technology take that kind of place in our lives. And so it becomes idolatry. And, and this is a big deal to God. From the very beginning, uh, God tells us that he just can't stand idols. Our God cannot stand idols. Um, in the Old Testament, God is uh, he's giving his people rules to live by. Kind of the uh, foundational ones uh, we refer to as the Ten Commandments. And the first two are really closely linked together. And this is what they say. Uh, God says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those, to those who love me and who keep my commands. God's foundational commands, no idols, no idols. In Isaiah, God says it this way. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. But our problem is we love idols. We love the things that we can create with our own hands. Uh, this is also from Isaiah uh, chapter 2. Isaiah says, their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. And, and it wasn't just in the Old Testament. We still do this today. Uh, and it's just going on all throughout history. Uh, John Calvin. Uh, Calvin was a 16th century French theologian. Uh, Calvin said that our hearts are idol factories. That we are just creating idols constantly in our hearts. And, uh, and I'm convinced he's right. And anything can, can become an idol if we give it too much ultimate prominence in our lives. Anything can become an idol, and everything has become an idol. And, and we really will. We, we will turn anything into idols. Uh, there's this great story in, in the Old Testament. And it, it, it's kind of ironic. It happens when uh, Moses, Moses is leading the people of Israel at this time. Moses is up on the mountaintop receiving these Ten Commandments from God. And so Moses is up on the mountaintop, uh, and God is saying, okay, Moses, here are the first two. You know, no other gods, no idols. Uh, here, they're doing that up on the mountain. You know what the rest of the people are doing down in the valley? They're making an idol. They are crafting something with their own hands. It's just kind of ironic to me. Here's God up on top saying, okay, first two rules, no idols. Uh, they're down there. They're making an idol. Anybody remember what they made? A golden calf. Now think about this for a moment. You can, you're making a God. You can make any God that you want. I mean, this is all up, up to you. You're going to make one out of gold. You could make a raging bull gigantic and enormous. Or you could make a fullback that could pick up two inches on fourth down. I mean, whatever, I'll get it out of my system, I promise. Uh, what, whatever, whatever, you could make any God you want to make. And what do they choose to make? A baby cow. I mean, we're just not real bright. I mean, we will turn stupid things into idols. Th things that are just useless and worth a baby cow, really? That's the best you'd come up with? I mean, we'll make anything an idol. Uh, for some people, power has become an idol. That's actually what, what happened in the beginning with Adam and with Eve. I mean, they, they wanted the power to be like God. And the, the moment they made that decision, power becomes an idol for them. And, and they'll do absolutely anything to a, be able to, to achieve it. Uh, some people will, um, uh, might make popularity an idol, or it might be money, or, or it might be sex, or it might be a physical appearance, their physical appearance. 
But, but here's what happens. When we begin to create idols, and, and we all do this, we give our lives over to them. And, and in a sense, we become possessed by them. And we, we order our lives, we, we structure our lives around them, and, and they start to define our actions and, and our decisions, and, uh, and we let our idols define who we are, kind of determine the outcome of our lives, and we allow them to, to be the source of, of trying to give our lives purpose and meaning. And, and every time we do that, the idol attempts to replace God. And technology has this unique capacity to become this sort of idol, mainly because it is so effective at meeting our needs. I mean, we're really good. Because God created us to be creative, we are really good at creating new technologies. And they work. And they make our lives easier. The problem is we begin to put our hope and trust in the technology and not in the God who gave us the gift to create it. And we begin to believe that if we just are creative enough, if we're just smart enough, if we just come up with the right technology, that we can solve all the problems of the world. And technology becomes an idol. And it enables other idols, other things that we use to replace God in our lives. Uh, if, if your idol is sex, technology allows you to look at pornography just kind of 24-7 on your computer, on your smartphone, uh, engage in illicit relationships. If your idol is money, technology enables you to just be obsessed with it and, and kind of track it throughout the day uh, or to gamble online or, or what, whatever it might be. If your idol is popularity, well, then all you got to do is have a thousand friends on Facebook and they can all follow you on Twitter and like the selfie you just posted on Instagram. And, uh, and, and people do this because uh, they just become obsessed with these things in our lives. And we all know people who are doing this. Uh, people who have become so close to their online, their, their virtual relationships, that they're kind of closing out physical relationships in their lives and, and distancing themselves from them. And for those of you in our online community, that's always one of our, our, our uh, things we care about for you. We don't want you just to go to church online. We want you to find a church where you can physically be present with somebody and just use online as a stepping stone toward that. Uh, we've, we've all gone out to dinner, and we've watched the family next to us, and, and dad's on his cell phone talking, and, and mom's busy texting somebody, and every kid has their own screen, their iPad or, or somebody's phone, and they are all just completely immersed in their own virtual world. Y'all seen that, right? We have friends who, who just immerse themselves for hours Hours, and, and we see kids do this. They just immerse themselves in video games and virtual worlds that somehow are more attractive to them than the real world that we live in. We let technology give our lives meaning. I need to feel good about myself, so I, I, if I get the latest technology, that, that'll help do that. We trust that technology is going to fix all the brokenness in my life. I'm lonely, so I'll just go online, and, and maybe I will find a friend. I feel like a failure, so I'll post some Instagrams that make, it me, make me look good to, uh, to, to everybody else. I don't want to face the reality of my own brokenness, my own reality of my own life, so I'll just kind of lose myself in a virtual world. We do this. We do it all the time. And, and I'll be really transparent here. You know, working on this message, I've been reading about this for... Uh, you know, really for, for a couple of months now, just different uh, articles on this topic and a few books. And, uh, I mean, this is something I deal with. And, and preparing this message, I just want to be transparent with you. I mean, I've been made aware of places in my own life where I just rely on technology. Uh, one, one of my weaknesses is I just covet the latest technology. In the New Testament, idolatry and, covet to, and coveting things are, are always linked together. And, and it's just killing me right now that some of you already have the new iPhone 6 or you have it on order, and I don't. Um, because it just, I just get caught up in that. 
And, and I use technology in all kinds of ways that, uh, that hopefully are bringing God glory and are being used to further his kingdom. But I will also use it as a distraction. And, and when I do, sometimes it will distance me from people that are far more important than, than any sort of handheld device. It, it, this isn't something that's happening to other people. This is a topic that we all need to, need to deal with in, in some degree. So here's what we need to do, uh, what m most of us need to do, I'm convinced. We need to get rid of the idols in our lives, wh whatever they might be. We, we need to stop giving them places of prominence where, where only God is supposed to rest. Uh, there's this great passage from the prophet Jeremiah, and uh, it's a call to give up our idols, and, and it also comes with this promise. This is from Jeremiah 4. This is God speaking to Israel. God says, if you, Israel, will return, then return to me. If you will put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray, and if in a truthful and just righteous way you swear, as surely as the Lord lives, then the nations will evoke blessings by him, and in him they will boast. Get rid of your idols. It's, it's a choice that we have to make to simply get rid of our dependency upon our idols and to put our trust back in God. And he says, if you do that, if you'll do that, then I'll bless you. And I'll bless you. And, and you'll boast about me because you'll discover that I'm the answer for your loneliness. I'm the answer for your brokenness. I'm the answer for the sin of this world. So here's what we need to do. Here's what I need to do and, uh, and what a lot of us need to do. We need to establish some boundaries around technology. Take the homework card as you leave this morning. Uh, I, I promise, it, it, I'm, I'm, my, Kim, my wife and I, we're working through it. Uh, take it, work through it. It will help you to establish some boundaries around technology in your life. And, uh, and, and use this as a way to do it. If you're watching online, you can download a PDF file of this off of our website. So establish some boundaries around how you use technology in your life. Come to the workshop if you are able to do that. Um, and then secondly, and this is how we're going to close this morning. Um, secondly, uh, sometimes what we simply need to do is confess, God, I've been getting this wrong. And maybe that's where, where you are this morning. And maybe we've been talking about all this, and you've been thinking, you know, I really have allowed technology to take too prominent of a place in my life. I'm putting my hope in it. Um, I'm giving too much time to it. It's, it's drawing me away from God and, and away from other people. Uh, or maybe it's enabling some behaviors in my life that, that they're drawing me away from God. They're just part of my sinful rebellion. Uh, the band's going to come back out, and, uh, and we're going to close with a song in which we are uh, encouraged to give our hearts to God. And what I want to invite you to do as we sing that is to do just that is to give your hearts over to God. To, as, as we sing this, let this be your prayer. Let it be a prayer of confession, maybe for you. God, there's some places in my life where I, I have just not been getting this right. And, uh, and ask God to come. You, you hear the words in the song. Ask him to come and to heal you and to put you back together in that brokenness again. So we're going to sing that together, and then I'm going to pray for all of us, and, uh, and then we'll be uh, done this morning. Let's stand, and we're going to sing this song together.
bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, that, that's all we want to do right now. We just want to give you our hearts. And Lord, we confess that there are places in our lives where we have allowed other things to become idols. Where we have let them take your place in our lives. And we have put our hope and we have put our trust in them. And technology for a lot of us is one of those places. And so, Lord, would you forgive us for that? For, forgive us for, for the hope that we place in our own creative ability. For the ways in which we turn to technology to give our lives meaning and purpose. For the ways that we use technology to enable us to, to build other idols that, that draw us away from you. Lord, there's some in the room right now and they're, and they're struggling with pornography. And there's some who are struggling with online gambling. And there's some who are, are just immersing themselves in technology to, to hide from the world. Lord, would, would you break into those hearts, break into those lives as, as we lay them before you now? Lord, would you come and, and do exactly what we're singing about? Would you come and would you bring healing and, and would your power be at work? Lord, we, we don't want to have any idols in our lives. We want to cast them all down so that we might declare with, with everything that we have, with the way in which we live our lives, that you and only you are the Lord of our lives. Lord, Lord help us to do that as we give our hearts over to you. For we pray all of that in Christ's name. Amen. I am found. I am yours. I am love. I have life, I can breathe, I am here, I am free about God. You are strong, so you, you are sure. this morning, I want to invite you, if, uh, if you came in today and, and you're in need of prayer and, uh, and you would like someone to pray with you, uh, to pray for you, we've got a prayer team that meets after every service and they'll be right over here by the steps and they can help you find the prayer corner and, uh, and we would just love nothing more than to help you lift those burdens up to God and maybe easy, easy that load uh, a little bit that you have been carrying. So we encourage you to do that. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be wrapping up this series on faith in the modern family. And in two weeks, uh, we're going to be starting a, a new series uh, on Amos, on the Old Testament prophet Amos called A Flood of Justice. And, uh, and we're just super excited about this series. Uh, we're going to be talking about how God's plan is to use us as part of this creation mandate 
to help bring his justice to the world. And, uh, and so start getting excited. That's going to be a fantastic series. Uh, this Wednesday night, we are uh, continuing our series with Dr. Matthews from Beeson Divinity School on how to read the Bible. But we're also going to be having a worship night and celebrating communion. And so that is 630 this Wednesday. And I encourage you to come and to bring a friend and to be a part of all of that. Um, as we go out into the day now and back into our weeks, uh, know that we never leave here alone. But what we firmly believe is that our living Lord Jesus Christ, he always goes with us. And so may he go above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, within you to give you peace, and before you to show you his way, now and forevermore. Amen. I am found.